Okay, this is the P3 exam, January 2022. As you can see, this is question six, which is a functions and graphs question in the main. Uh, the calculus part, decreasing functions, is going to be differentiation, and it's differentiation of a quotient. Uh, but let's make a start and see what we've got for this question. So, it tells me that my function is defined by a... Uh, fx is equal to 5x minus 3 over x minus 4, where x, the domain of the values, is going to be greater than 4. Well, yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about that moment. That'll be for inverses and ranges and domains later. We're starting off by trying to show something's a decreasing function. So a reminder to you that a function is decreasing if the gradient is always negative. OK, so that's what they're really asking me to do. And that's what I'm going to try and do for my first bit. I can see here I've got a quotient. I've got my u is 5x minus 3 and my v is x minus 4. So du by dx is going to be equal to 5 and dv by dx is going to be equal to 1. The way that I always write down the quotient rule is I say V D U minus U D V all over V squared. I know there are people that talk about using V dash and U dash. There are people that talk about first diff, second, second diff, first. However, this is the way that I remember it. So this is what I'm going to stick to. And this is why I've set my diagram out like this, or my, my answer rather, because V D U is those two, U D V is those two. And so it means I'm going to be less likely to make a copying error when I actually go through and do this one. Let's see whether I can manage that. So VDU is x minus 4 times 5. I'm going to write that as 5x minus 4 minus UDV. UDV is 5x minus 3 times 1. Well, I'm not going to put the 1 in, but I am going to keep the bracket in there just because I've got a choice, really. I can either do that or I can put the plus in there straight away and not have the brackets. I tend to have it written down like that, so I'll try and go with my traditional way of doing it, all over v squared. Okay, so we've got, sorry, got that far. Uh, let's tidy up the numerator there. That's 5x minus 20 minus 5x uh, plus 3, all over x minus 4 squared. And then those five X's cancel. Yeah, and I get, yeah, this is exactly what we, we would hope to get. I'm getting minus 17 over X minus four squared. And I'd already told you that when we're doing this, what we actually want is to have this being a negative. Well, this is a negative. So I just need to explain to the examiner that I understood what happened there. Since minus 17 over X minus four squared is always negative, Oops, spelling is always negative. Obviously, remember, x is greater than 4, so I'm not going to get um, divided by 0, so I don't need to worry about that. Since that's always negative, fx is a decreasing function. Okay, so that's the first part done. Uh, second part, they wanted the inverse, didn't they? So if we said... Remind ourselves what the function was. fx is equal to 5x minus 3 over x minus 4, where x is greater than 4. That's now coming in a little bit. If that's true and I want to find the inverse, well, the way to find the inverse with these, hopefully you practice these, is set it equal to y and then rearrange to make x the subject here. And this should be relatively straightforward for you. Multiply everything by x minus four. Let's get rid of that fraction. So I'm gonna have x minus four y equals five x minus three. Multiply out my bracket here. Now, even as I'm doing this, I know what I'm trying to get to. I wanna get all the x's on one side, everything else onto the other side, so I can then um, factorize and divide. Let's do it, let's talk about it, let's do it. Uh, that's going to be that is equal to 4y minus 3. Take x out as a factor. Leaves me that. 
Okay, and then uh, x is equal to 4y minus 3 all over, Mr. Peters, all over y minus 5. I'm jumping ahead of myself there. Then once I've got to this stage, um, that's not the question. The question said, what's the inverse of fx? So everything has to be in terms of x over x minus 5 here. Now, the domain takes a little bit of doing, uh, and I want to explain in more detail later when I'm doing another one. So I'm going to do this really quickly, but if you go towards the end of the video, I'll explain what I'm doing a bit quicker um, with the idea about how to find the range of one of these functions. The domain of f to the minus 1 is the range of this one. So what's the range of this one going to be? Well, the range of this one, I know this is going to be some sort of... Um, some sort of reciprocal function here. So what I'm really interested in is what this y asymptote is going to be, because I've got the y asymptote, I can then work out what the range of values is gonna be. Given that we know x is greater than four, we're only looking over here, this part of the graph. So I will come back to this in a bit more detail, but the way that I work out the range of this function Sorry, the way that I work out the y asymptote for this function is I'm just going to say x tends towards infinity. So if x tends towards infinity, what I'm going to get is f infinity is 5 infinity minus 3 over infinity minus 4. If you've got 5 infinity, taking away 3 doesn't do anything to it and taking away 4 doesn't do anything to it. So I get 5 infinity over infinity, which gives me 5 there. So here, if I know that the range of those values is going to be um, fx greater than 5, then the domain of these values is going to be x greater than 5. The reason I don't want to spend too long on that is because it's only one mark, and I'm going to explain it in a little bit more detail later on when I'm doing the uh, last part of the question. So jump down to that if you need to for a, a slightly more detailed version of it. Part C, though, is um, a little bit more algebra again. They're saying fx is equal to 5x minus 3 all over x minus 4. And now they want this function ffx. So ffx means doing multiply by 5 and take away 3 over the thing minus four, but where this is my input now, okay? So what that means is I'm gonna get five lots of having this as my input. Take away three, there's my numerator, divided by my input take away four here. So five X minus three over X minus four, take away four. Now, this really does depend on how much time you've got in the exam here. Um, it's going to take quite a few steps, but I'm going to do it, obviously. Um, what I want to do is do enough steps, but try and be quite efficient with what I'm doing here. Uh, I'll try and use my iPad just to save a bit of time here. So if I copy that and I just paste it down there. Uh, what I'm going to do for my first bit then is to say I'm just going to make x minus 4 over x minus 4 there and I'm going to say x minus 4 over x minus 4 there so if I do that then on the numerator I've got this fraction which is over x minus 4 and that fraction will be 25 x minus 15 minus 3 x plus 12 I'm doing all of that top bit there that's all divided by x minus 4, all over, and a similar thing, let's get rid of the arrow, a similar thing on my denominator, 5x minus 3 minus 4x plus 16, all over x minus 4 here again. And if I'm dividing these two, in effect, they're just going to cancel out, aren't they? Now, you can turn one of the fractions upside down, etc., etc. But, you know, this video is long enough as it is. So I'm just going to go straight to tidying up what the top 
is going to be 22x minus 3, the numerator, tidying up my denominator, x plus 13 here, and that is this divided by this. The 2x minus 4s are cancelling out, okay? Uh, so that's my answer. That's my answer for FFX. Oh, for goodness sake, that's my answer for, where are we? FFX. And then on to part, the last part, this is where, as I say, you could do this quite quickly now, but I'm just going to slow down and just explain to you how I would draw this function out, how I would work out the asymptotes, where it hits the axes, etc. If you haven't got a lot of time in the exam, do remember now that we said that x is greater than 4. So just very quickly, when I actually get this drawn out, I think it's going to look something like this. There's going to be a bit up here and there's going to be a bit over there. Well, I'm talking about x greater than 4. If I'm talking about x greater than 4, I'm probably only talking about this part of the graph there. So I don't need all the information there. But because I've got the opportunity at the moment just to talk to you about what one of these looks like, I wouldn't be doing all this information in an exam, but I'm just going to go through it with you guys now. Very useful for one of these sorts of functions. So if I've got my reciprocal function here, ffx equals 22x minus 3 over x plus 13. I say, I know it either basically looks like that or like that, but the asymptotes will move it around somewhere. So if I can work out where it hits axes and what the asymptotes are, I can draw it in. So I just do all of those things. But just to reiterate, in the exam, I wouldn't be going through all of this detail. So uh, x equals naught ff naught is just naught naught there is minus 3 over 13. Super. At y equals naught, we just get the top bit equals naught. So we get x equals 3 over 22. I'm really only interested in whether they're positive or negative at this point. Uh, let's talk about the asymptotes then, which I talked about quite quickly uh, earlier on in the question. And it's this idea about finding your horizontal asymptotes. And what I'm basically saying is for this one, if I'm trying to find the horizontal asymptote, let's just put it in. Okay, for this horizontal asymptotes, my function either looks like that or looks like that. So either way... When you have really big values of x, and I'm talking about 1,000, 10,000, a million, the value is going to be pretty much as close as we can to the asymptote. So I just take that to the furthest possible level of thought and say, if I want to work out my y asymptote, I just let x tend towards infinity. And it's really quick. I'm taking too much time. It's 22. It's 22 infinity over infinity here. But I slow it down and say... 22 infinity minus 3 over infinity plus 13. Not interested in those ones. It works out to be equal to 22. So y equals 22. And the x asymptote is always really easy. x asymptote in this case is just x equals minus 13. So if I now put all this information on my diagram, way, way, way too much for this particular question. But I've got that the x asymptote is over here at minus 13. I'm going to sort of shorten this up a bit, otherwise I won't be able to fit it all on. But x asymptote is minus 13 there. The y asymptote is up here at y equals 22. And remember from before we had that it was hitting at uh, minus 3 over 13 and 3 over 22 there. More than enough information to say, my graph is looking like this. It's doing that, and it's doing that. Now that I know that, I'm only interested in x being greater than 4. So this was the key, and this always tends to be the, the, the way that these questions work. My actual function, ff, really is just that bit in there, 
Okay, it's that bit in there. It's not really a reciprocal graph. It's just a, a curve going towards an asymptote here. So in order to answer this question now, what's my range of values? Well, my range of values is just from there to there. So what I want to do is to work out what this value is, because I know that value there is y equals 22. So if I'm going to work out my range of values, let's do, change my color, f, f4, and see what that value works out to be. So 22, lots of four, minus three over four plus 13. So that works out to be uh, 88 minus 3 over 70. Oh, that's nice. That works out to be equal to 5. Okay, so this value here is 5. We know this value here is 22. So if I'm trying to get my answer for my range now, it's going to be between 22 and 5. Okay, that's quite a lot of work for that little bit there, and it, there's not many marks for it in terms of the whole thing's equal to five. That is very much a question that I would have come back to at the end of an exam, um, and it's for your A star students, your students who are trying to get you know, 100 UMS or you know do as absolutely well as possible. I don't know how valuable it is to go after those marks until you've absolutely gone through the paper and made sure you've got everything else. For me, when I'm doing these questions, I almost give myself that time. I'm pretty quick at going through and doing questions, and I know I'm going to slow down to do that bit, and I'll make up time elsewhere. In terms of the actual answer I would have done for that, obviously, I wouldn't really have needed all of that stuff here. I could have gone just from where Y equals 22, and then, and then had a look at it. But hopefully that makes sense to you, just in terms of a little bit of teaching for the functions and graphs. Okay, hopefully that will make sense.